Welcome, one and all, season two of Hong Kong horse racing with the host, the Hutch, and the Hall of Fame, and lots to talk about. RSI, Clint Hutchison. I'm Jason Richardson, and an absolute pleasure, Hutch, to see you season two as we dissect everything great about Hong Kong racing, and I've even got my hat on. You have got the hat on. It's looking pretty good too, that as well. No, what a, and what a week to come back, of course. We've got the Derby. It is the race, Richo that every owner in Hong Kong wants to win and trainer and jockey. So it's a, it's a great uh, meeting to come back in. And I think this year we're in for a real special edition of the Derby. It's going to be fantastic. RS Die uh, Season 2. Who said it wouldn't last, my friend? Richo, it's nice to see you. Mate, I love watching you at the Olympics, the Winter Games. <laughs> you produced a different beanie every night. You were <laughs> sensational. You look great. And you did a great job, mate. But I love those beanies. Oh, mate, I, I feel uncomfortable getting a compliment no, from he's you. He's being nice to you. What's happened? What's going on, mate? You're being nice. The grey and the red one suited you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you I feel know like that one, Richo? I know that one. I feel like there's a whack coming somewhere. Hey, uh, Shane, there's something so special about the Hong Kong Derby, isn't it? What's it like to ride in that great race? Well, it's like the Melbourne Cup. You know, it's special to Australia. It's special to New Zealand. In Hong Kong, it's the Hong Kong Derby. All year, that's the race you want to win. Naturally, the international races are very important, but from a perspective of a Hong Kong owner, that's definitely the number one race. They're looking two, two years earlier to buy a horse that can go there from Australia or New Zealand or Europe that can qualify to race in the race and then win it. And it's the race that everyone, like the Melbourne Cup stops the nation, in Hong Kong, the Derby stops Hong Kong. It is something so special, isn't it? I suppose, uh, you know, some of the international audience, Hutch, get intoxicated with the international meeting. But from a pure Hong Kong point of view, this is the race. Yeah, this is the race. And, you know, they go searching globally for to buy the horses. They're always saying, is this going to be a Derby horse? I want a Derby horse. And it's the photo that the owners want on the wall. And they'll spend a lot of money to try and buy that. Um, and a lot of them obviously have uh, plenty of that. But... Um, you know, it is it is a special race. And we've unearthed some really good horses through this race. Of course, Golden 60 a few years back, uh, he won it. Not all of them go on. It's pretty much like anywhere. Some years are better than others. But this year, this crop, these are very, very good horses. And I'd be very surprised if uh, we don't unearth another star. Season two of our little podcast. And we love bringing it to you. And thanks to everyone who's been supporting it. Lots coming up in this edition. We're going to chat all about the Jockey Championship, what a battle it is between Zach and Joe. We'll dissect that in a moment. Of course, the ever-popular genius or slaughter, or we like to call it the Oki or Viander Cross and RS Dio has got a couple of the jockeys that he certainly got his binoculars on. Hong Kong Racing School, we want to talk about betting with the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Uh, Karis Teton's going to be our star power guest this week. And we'll find you a stack of winners and do a lot of analysis in regards to the derby. And out the gate, we are concentrating on this battle for the jockey championship. Zach versus Joe. And at the moment, Zach on 90 wins, Marrera on 85. Zach back from injury. We spoke to him and he said he felt a little heavy when he came back from injury, but got momentum now. It's been an incredible season as far as the jockey ranks are concerned. I mean, uh, with Zach and Joe, gee, it's, there's been some highs and lows for both of them, of course. But uh, yeah, there's been toing and froing. We've seen Zach come out of the blocks particularly well. And then uh, Joe a little bit it took a little bit of time to get momentum, I think, until he spoke to RS Dine, that he just found new levels, let's be <laughs> honest. Uh, and then, of course, um, yeah, just a couple of factors there. Zach with the four, then Joe with, uh, with his suspension um, with a month off as well. So Ultimately, now that it's sort of almost level pegging once again, um, they're both riding well from what I can see. Jane might have a different uh, view. Ch uh, Zach's clearly in the zone. I mean, his strike rate the last couple of weeks has been, a few weeks has been unbelievable, particularly when Joe was out and um, the pressure's back on Joe. But he responded recently and he needed to. Well, he did respond. And RS, you were the man that put him under the microscope. You had a heart to heart right here on our podcast. You spoke to him about the fact that. He wasn't cutting the corner at Happy Valley and he was being a little conservative. By gee, did he respond to you? 
He's riding Happy Valley really well. You saw on Wednesday night a couple of his winners are on the fence. Even when he's third on the fence, he's not coming out before the turn. He's waiting. He's changed, and uh, he's a different jockey at Happy Valley, and he's riding very well. As for the Jockeys Championship, I want to ask you one question. Why don't they bet on this in Hong Kong? It would be amazing for the Hong Kong Jockey Club. The turnover would be big betting week in, week out on Joe and Sack, who wins the premiership, and it would change. Is there a reason why they don't bet on that? Um, I think it's probably something that they think about. I mean, it would be amazing. You're absolutely right. Particularly, I'm staggered they don't. Particularly with the uh, the sort of ups and downs each one has sort of had through, mm. you know, this season and in past seasons it's yeah. been sort of up for grabs. So, yeah, I mean, it could be something to look at, of course, that. And, and I think also, Shane, you know, feature races that, is another thing that they may well look at down the track. They've always spoken about that, of course, because the Jockey Club have fixed odds on soccer, et cetera, and, and sports, but not so much in racing except for the Jockey Challenge itself um, locally. But it wouldn't take a leap to go from the Jockey Challenge to the Jockey for the season and, you know, maybe a derby at some stage. Who knows? But, yeah, it's something that I'm sure they'll probably look at. But, Clint, even starting to bet now on it would be very, very interesting. And um, I don't know who's going to win. I think Zach is a little bit tactically better than Joe. Both are riding very, very well. Joe has the advantage of um, his weight. He can ride 113, which he makes 115. Uh, Zach doesn't really, well, he can't ride under 118, which means he can get to 120 with the two pounds allowance. So that brings Joe right in. And also um, Casper hasn't fired as much as last season because his horses were on the on a, on on their mark. Now, if he finishes strongly, that's going to help Joe. You know John Sires is always there, so that helps Joe. But, of course, Zach has the Chinese trainer. So it's very, very even. Both are riding very well. And um, it'll come down to s- suspensions at the end. Uh, can we go back to that suspension? So the 19th of January, Joe Moreira was suspended. Shane, your assessment of it, did you think that was fair? No, it wasn't fair. He should have got a lot longer. Six meetings wasn't enough. Um, when I was riding there, the least you'd get is nine, and that probably deserved two months. Uh, that horse would have run second. He got off very, very lightly and was very lucky. Take us through it right here. We're watching the vision. So uh, he was charged. Well, I, can t- I can tell you what happened. And I, from a jockey's point of view, he got back and he made a couple of wrong decisions. And you kind of give up on a horse when that happens, even though you want to win the race. And he would have realised turning for home. This has nothing to do with the charge of the ride. Um, it's it's late in the race. Um, he just didn't ride it to the right line. Now, like I've done it before and I've been charged. It's, it's, it's that... You kind of give up, but then the horse keeps going. And after the race, you look and you go, shit, I could have run second or I could have run third. That horse there would have run second. Joe got up very light. He knew the mistake. There was no malice, no no, no underdoing fact to it. It was just a mistake. And um, these things happen. And don't worry, Joe's not the first one. I'm not the first one it's happened to. Roy Higgins stopped riding in a Mooney Valley Cup, I think it was. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, we look at that. He was going to riders in 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 other places, Shane, in Australia or in England, and think, I can't believe he got suspended at all. So while you say it's hard, we know why it is because he could have potentially run second. And the Cornella Pool, as we've spoken about huge. in Hong Kong, it's huge, and they look after the punters. And they want to make sure they ride them out to line. And I don't think there's any excuse that riders should always ride them out. There's just no excuse. I know it happens. But so is it just a brain fade? I I think he I think exactly what Shane said. He just sort of thought I can't be there. Yeah. Um. And he's just probably been a little bit too too lazy in the concluding stages. There was one leading up to that a few weeks early. I think seizing the moment or another one where he just for a stride or two he was a little bit um you know quiet on him and uh, look I think I think you can understand a decision. I'm not sure about it not being harsh enough. I mean Shane six meetings it would have cost him a fortune and I think uh, he 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 probably realized his mistake but I I know where Shane's coming from as well but it would have cost Joe a pretty penny for what he's done. Let's have a look at the swings and roundabouts in regard to this uh, jockey championship because with Zach being injured when he was holding a lead then you'll see that Joe Marrera has grabbed that opportunity and by the time Zach comes back as we we show you this graphic and it shows that um, when Zach got injured, he was on 51 wins and Marrera was on 39. By the time Zach returns a month later, 
He's then seven behind Marrera. So Joe grabs that opportunity and has 19 winners while Zach's sitting on the sidelines. Well, I'm sure Shane will concur with this. When one of the other's not riding, whoever's in the game just dominates. Yeah. It's like these two are so far in front of the rest, it's not funny. And I think Joe really gathered that momentum. And when Zach came back, I believe he really had a fight on his hands. Yeah. He and Joe had a lot of momentum there, Shane. And I don't know if he could have wrestled it back. So he's quite fortunate that then Joe got that suspension. And it's sort of now, once again, the ebb and flow has been amazing. So, so when he got that about. suspension. There, 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 there's a big difference between the two, right? And the big difference is when Zach isn't riding, Joe rides a lot of winners, right? But when they're both riding, he doesn't ride as much. Now, when Zach is riding, the, uh, not, when, when Joe's not riding and Zach's riding, it's not as dominant as the other way around. Zach, uh, I mean, Joe is so dominant when Zach is not riding. It's unbelievable. His confidence goes to another level. But when Zach's riding, it's just not quite there, I believe. Shane, did you have someone there that you were worried about that you didn't ride as many back in the day? Oh, when no, no. Uh, Was there someone there that you thought, oh, the which whole, he wasn't in the, the race? The whole jockey's no. room. No, um, no, no, I didn't no. care about anyone, you know. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they worried about you. <laughs> they used to come and see me before the races. <laughs> I mean, for me, I, I think Zach on balance is riding a touch better at the moment. There's really not much between them. But I think Joe might be – Joe's going to have a very strong finish for the season, I believe. So, I'll, I mean, I know uh, Shane was sitting on the fence. He's not sure he's going to win. I'll, 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 I'll won't sit on the fence. Okay, I'll you say, be bold. I'll say Joe will get up. Okay, so Marrera, for you, can uh, RS, you might as well just play the devil's advocate and go for our man, Zach. I've got no idea. But, <laughs> and I'm being honest. Uh, um, uh, Zach's definitely riding better than Joe at present, although Joe did ride extremely well on Wednesday night. That was his first good meeting in a while. Um, Zach's been brilliant. Uh, he, when he come back from the fall, it took him about three meetings. His first two meetings back, he was really out of touch made a lot of mistakes, but then he got his momentum up and he's just on fire at present. But um, they're both riding well and I've got no idea who's going to win and it'll come down to suspensions. Hutchieshonkers.com, very profitable year so far, Huts. While we've been on a, a little summer siesta here in Australia, we're back for Series 2 of this hopefully very informative and entertainment uh, uh, video and also podcast. What's been the performance while we're away that's caught your eye? Yeah, well, the last series we highlighted one in Cordy Step Six as a yeah. as a gallop, and he's he looks like he's uh, continuing to go the way. I'm I'm not sure what Shane thinks of this guy, Lucky Swayness, but he's two from two. And interestingly, Zach went on him on debut. He bolted up, and then Joe got aboard on this occasion. And uh, look, this was a on my figures rated really well. He's a pretty special talent. He's already he's two from two. They've both been. A, at Happy Valley, but uh, this is a horse that's going places. He's going to add to his tally. He's one to sort of write down and, and continue to follow, certainly in the short term. I see him winning at least a couple of more before the season's out. Back by popular demand, genius or slaughter. The Andercross versus Oki. Of course, we get Shane Dye, the Hall of Fame jockey, to assess all the great and not so great rides in Hong Kong. Sweep for home now. Gather now on the inside. Beander Cross has come very wide after him. Beander Cross in front of Mannerism. Beander Cross answering the urgings of Shane Dye ahead in front. Mannerism coming at him. Beander Cross. Beander Cross look to have the race won 100 metres from home. Mannerism has got it. Daring tactics by Shane Dye. Will they pay off? He's got octagonal in full flight on the corner. But bold tactics by Shane Dye are going to pay off and he pinches the chipping Norton. Well, RS Dye, let's lead in. Let's lead in with the negatives, which is not like you. But uh, who was the Viander Cross? Who was the slaughter that's caught your eye in recent times? Well, I was asked to pick one out in the last few months, and it was definitely um, Dragon uh, Pride. Like I just couldn't believe it. There he Matthew is, Matthew Chadwick. Matthew Chadwick. He's drawn out there uh, in about seven or eight. Now, why you don't go to the fence has got me. This is my pet hate with jockeys. Just go to the fence. Look where he is. He can get across to the fence now if you have a look on the top sheet, but he stays three, four off. That's him third last in the orange colours. Now, if you have a look, the horse behind him, 
gets up on the fence in the red with the yellow and black check sleeves. He stays off. He could have been where that horse was. Now, if you're watching on the side on shot, look where that horse ends up. Now, have a look at the horse last. He gets up inside of him now. And Dragon oh. Pride's off the fence going back. Now, have a look at midfield where that horse was. Dragon Pride would have been up there. Instead, now he's back last. If you watch up here, he tries to go wide and he gets interfered with, well, can't get a run, tries to go wide. Now, if you have a look at uh, the horse in the red colours, look where he is, three back, one off now. Dragon Pride's back last. These two here that were behind him have got the best runs. This horse, Dragon Pride, gets back, gets beaten neck. He would have won by three or four lengths. There's no doubt about that. I just hate this with jockeys. It drives me mad. Go to the fence, and I keep saying it, and it cost him a win. Now, if you think he wouldn't have won the race, he's come out, Zach got on him and won his next two starts, and he won his start before that. To me, that's the worst ride of the season because he had an opportunity to go to the fence, back last, didn't take it, and it just drives me mad. And jockeys have to learn there's nothing wrong with the fence. Stay ground. And it's it, the racing in Hong Kong is so even, you can't be getting interfered with, you can't be getting pushed wide or going wide. They're in class five for a reason. So save ground, he would have won by three lengths. He was something licked. Actually. He was. And fortunately, we, uh, we were on him at the next couple of starts. He, he got on. But no, Shane, couldn't agree with more with what he said there. The only thing I disagree with, with what Shane said, it was the worst of the season. It's probably right up there. I've picked a few out myself, but I won't be <laughs> declaring them right now. But I seem to have one every week, worst ride of the season. Well, I tell you what, there'll be a lot of punters who are more casual punters who aren't analysing it like a Hall of Famer like Shane no, Dye, who would be thinking that Vincent Ho's ride on Golden 60 might have made the Viander Cross file. Shane, did he make the file for you? What did you make of that ride? Well, two starts uh, two starts ago on a mile was a shocking ride. We all know that. But last start, he lost the race at the first bend. Why he didn't go back to last has me beat. If I'm on the source, I go straight back to last. It's 2,000 metres. I know he's won a derby, but he's got to be safe. There's one horse to beat, Russian Empire. Just follow him. You've got a better sprint. He loses the race here. If you watch him pushing him here, trying to push Russian Empire here, when I'm watching the race, I said to myself, that horse can't win now. And no one would realise that. They so probably, you would have flopped him out of the barriers and then be sitting I would last. have been last following Russian Empire because he's the horse you got to beat. Nothing else in the race can win before the race. There's only one chance. So just follow him. If you get beat, you get beat. And then he's back last and he has to circle them and he's made a 1,000 metre run on a horse who struggles. Well, I know he won the derby, but he's really a miler. He ran enormous. If he stays, saves ground, follows Empire, uh, Russian Empire through, and everyone said, oh, didn't make excuse, this and that, 2,000 wet track. Mate, he probably should have nearly won the race, I believe. You know, he's, he's done this twice. Ride these good horses on the fence, save ground. They come out the dash. Now, I told you this uh, after the uh, Clint, after the um, International Day, we had this talk about him making a long run. And I said, you can't on him. The more he's held up, the more he'll sprint like he did on International Day. Remember that, Clint? Oh, yeah. yeah, I do. I, 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 and, 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 and I just think these good horses, you hold them up, they just go ping, they pick up three, four. But he wants to get back, be safe, go around them and uh, take, um, as um, Richo said to me once, uh, he would rather horse out of trouble. I would rather than boxed away in trouble and looking for a run eventually getting it and win. Well, he's a horse that can take the gap. And he like can Shane pin. Said. I mean, he he, he, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing with him, though, I mean, while Shane says that, um, you know, about his turn of foot, I mean, he is explosive late, but, I mean, he cruises up to them and yeah. we see him, you know, make up that many lengths so quickly. But, you know, I think um, for me, I don't think wet ground's ideal for him. He gets no, 2,000, but he's better, he's, better over, he's better over a mile. That's his optimum trip. He'll be back. And I agree with Shane. It was a great run and defeat. Yeah, so surely... I, I mean, I take Shane's point. Sit back, cuddle him for, you know, if he's a question mark on wet ground and question mark at 2,000, cuddle him up and let him ping well, once. And that, this, that's, is important that's, with the, this is important with the barrier. Just, I'll just, just get in first, Shane, here, because that, that 2,000 metre start, when he drew where he did, that was an issue because he's a horse that you'd want to be neutral on. Now, personally, I don't, I think with him, he's not one that you want to dig out of the gates, but as we saw in the, in the Hong Kong mile, you can be neutral. So he can be midfield. They went so much faster in the Hong Kong mile and he was midfield traveling. So there's no need to be that far back. I know Shane wanted to go back. 
in that race. It was probably the right call where he drew. But if he drew inside it on that 2,000 metre race, he could have been midfield and ridden patiently. Like you can ride them cold um, from, you know, from that barrier, but the barriers are really important. Yeah. That, that's true, Clint, but you've got to make every race different. Like the start, two starts before, he should have been closer. He should have saved ground. He wins by three, right? Instead, Vincent went out there in his mind. He had to go back and had to be in the clear and give him a clear run, which to me, I'm not even thinking about when I'm riding a good horse like that. I'm looking to save ground and come out. That race there, his only option was to jump out, go back to last. He couldn't be midfield because he's not going to get in. And he could be trapped three wide on a wet track, which is no good. And I'm always looking to beat another horse. And the best horse in that race was Rich, uh, Russian Empire. And he should have followed him. Good call. Uh, Russian Emperor, I think the, yep. the horse name. But we all know what you're talking about, RS. Uh, and I do note with great interest that you haven't put anyone in the genius file. You couldn't find one bloody good oh, ride. No, actually, no, no, no. There's, I said to uh, Jason, I said there's been that many that are saving ground and Riding oh. well, Sachs had many. There's like, let's cut the program short, eh? <laughs> I'll get one for you next week. I'll watch. I'll watch. I'll watch. I've got to get to golf. Okay, I'm meant to be there soon. Um, let's 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 look next week for the good genius rides, and I'll find a couple for you. RS Dye's got a tea time, so let's move to the Hong Kong Racing School. <laughs> Question that uh, everyone would love to know, especially our international audience, Hutch, is how do we bet into the Hong Kong pools, or can we actually bet in Hong Kong? Take us through the process. Well, yeah, the thing is, with you can obviously bet into the Hong Kong pools depending on where you are globally. So in Australia, obviously, with the pools commingled, yep. we are betting in through the tab. But anybody actually um, can have a, an account with a Hong Kong Jockey Club. Uh, you just need a Hong Kong bank account which will, you know, you can sort that out how you may want to. But we bet into the win, place, Quinella, Quinella place pools, right. which is duets here, though, and the TS or the trifecta, those pools are commingled. So if you're betting in, in Australia, for example, and you're betting with the tab, then you go straight into that. Outside of that, if there's the things like the triple trio, and there's a big jackpot this weekend, I'll, I'll ask Shane about that because Shane, I know, has a, a fair bit of success in that department. But like a triple trio pool, for example, will not be. But if you wanted to do or bet into that, anybody can open an account with the, with the Hong Kong Jockey Club. And the odds is, you know, bet.hkjc.com. You just go there. You can see all the, you know, the odds there and, and go through the process. Okay. So, so we can we can bet directly with the Hong Kong Jockey Club. You can. Anybody can. Hong Kong. Globally. Um, RS, I don't want to get too personal, but how do you go about trading? How are you betting? You betting... Directly with Hong Kong or you're trading through yes. Australia? Yes. No, no. Well, kind of both, but my main is in Hong Kong, of course, um, because Australia doesn't take enough, but I bet in Hong Kong. Now, the biggest thing is you get 10% rebate if you bet on, into the Hong Kong Jockey Club on anything 10,000 Hong Kong, which is equivalent to $1,800 uh, Aussie. So if you have a bet of $1,800 Aussie and it doesn't win, you'll get 10% back straight away credited in your account. But if you back the Quinella, Quinella place, they'll give you 12% rebate. It's a big thing at the end of the year. It's amazing. So that's one of the advantages. Yeah, I mean, effectively, Rich, you can, I mean, yeah. obviously people, a lot of, it's not easy to make money through the year, but if you, you break square and then uh, on the year and you get a rebate of 10%, well, there little you go. 10 you or made 10 12% little uh, yeah. kickback sounds bloody enticing to me. Hey, triple trio and trios and tiers, et cetera. Explain all that to us, uh, Shane, because I know a lot of our Aussie audience get awfully confused. Triple Trio is the best thing there is. It's um, it's race on a on a ten race program. It's race four, five, six. Um, there'll be fifty million in the pool this week, and win pools I think is about sixty percent of that first division, and then ten percent um, for um, consolation, and then there's more taken out for tax and more taken out for the future, but. Um, You've got to get three trios in a row. It's not easy. It's combinations. You can go to the Hong Kong Jockey Club and they actually have uh, on there and you can put it all in and you can work out how much it costs. It'll tell you which is the best way to go it. So you just go onto the triple trio board, you have a look, and it tells you how much to take. 
You take bankers in every race with different combinations. It's not easy, but you don't actually have to pick a trifecta. You've got to pick a trio. And the days, they used to pay like uh, over $100 million, but not now. So the one on last weekend paid $19.5 million. I was actually alive coming to the last leg. There was, I think, uh, out of $26 million, there was 1400 left, and I had quite a bit of it. But I missed it. My banker ran fourth. If it runs third, I would have got it. It paid um, it didn't go off, but it would have paid twenty million, nineteen and a half million, if it was hit. And so, just yeah. confirming also, so a trio, a trio is like a box trifecta. In, yes, a first three in any order, first right. three pass the post, any yeah. order. So, yeah. so trifecta is uh, first three in order. Box trifecta in Australian terminology, or a trio, mm. is in any order. In any order, and what's you know, like I know a lot of people. What's amazing about these bet types, as I find in Hong Kong as well, is like if you do hit one of them and are lucky enough, it's it's like taking a lotto ticket here. You, everyone goes and buys a lotto ticket, but there you can. Put a bit of form in. Surely yeah. you're a better chance, aren't you? I mean, but it's up to $10 million Aussie basically on the weekend. So it's incredible. I need to sit down with you and actually help me do it for the first time because I think that it seems tough for some of the punters who are new to that. But hearing RS say that he was very alive coming to the last and he had a big chunk of it and it paid how many million? I would said? like to do one with you. You know why? Because you're lucky. That's right. You <laughs> are lucky. And I'd rather be lucky than good. God, love it. Hey, quickly, what's a six up? Six in six a row? Six up, last six winners. But there's a consolation with that bet as well. So if you run second, you can get something back. They put a little bit aside in the pool, which allows you to, if you had four winners in two seconds, you can get something back. And some days the consolation can pay more than if you get all six winners on a different day. So it's, another, it's a bet I used to love when I was in Hong Kong. Oh, that is fantastic. So from a co-mingled point of view, that is, Those two pools aren't available. That's why I was saying not, no. Right. There's a co-mingle pool. Maybe that'll change down the track. At the moment, Wind Place, uh, Cornella, Cornella Place or Duet is it's known here. Yeah. I think in South Africa they might call it a swinger, the Duet. Um, so there's lots of different ways of pronouncing that. So that's something to look into anyway. I'm very Richo, scared. With, with, yes, Richo, yes, with RS. The six, uh, with the six up, mate, um, it's first and second you get. You've got to get first or second. If you get second, you get the consolation. But the trick to the uh, six up, if you can get a rough leg of, say, two 20 to one chances running first and second, then it really gets up and pays high, the consolation, because everyone has favourites. Um, so you need one leg of two 20s and then it pays big. Tell me to get back in my lane if I'm getting too personal. But when you're setting all your betting up for the day, are you placing a lot of emphasis on these exotics and multis, Shane? Mainly, yeah. Um, not not the six up until it jackpots. I don't care about it week in, week out. But once it jackpots, um, I want to find a race where I can more or less take all the outsiders, two races, and just hope that two outsiders lob, and then you're getting good value. But week in, week out, when there's no jackpot, I don't worry about it. I love it. We've got a lot of star power on this program already with Hutchie and also RS Dive, but we're going to add some star power now. Our star power guest this week is an absolute sensation. He sits third on the premiership at the moment, born in Mauritius, former South African champion apprentice and has been in Hong Kong since 2013. His name is Karis Teton. We welcome into the program, Karis. Thanks so much for your time. Third on the premiership. Uh, it's brilliant to have you on. How are you? Hi. All okay. Thank you very much for inviting me. Now it's, uh, everything's going very well in Hong Kong so far. Great season. Now we're just looking forward for, for a weekend. And you've just jumped off the bike. Uh, you got the new Cannondale. You're in great form both on the bike and also on the horses this season. Yeah, of course, you know, you have to just keep keep the fitness and, of course, got on a bike. It's a great weather in Hong Kong now. So get this done and over with so we can focus on studying the form later on. Karis, uh, congratulations on the season so far. You. How's your your feeling on on so far this season? I mean, I, I know it's been a little bit interrupted, but because you had such a good year last year, how have you felt uh, it, you come through? You know, the twenty one twenty two season so far. It's it started okay, and then uh, of course I had two fall this beginning of the season, uh, and that really set me back. Uh, I think throughout December I was not myself. I had a line fracture on my shoulder uh, when I fell off at uh, Happy Valley. 
So I did not stop riding. I kept pushing through and it just, it was not healing. So I was forced by the doctor to, to give the shoulder a rest. Otherwise, I was not going to finish the season strong. So I took a few weeks off and, uh, and once that shoulder was healed, now I'm, I feel better. I can, I'm pre- preparing myself better before going to races. And, uh, and, you know, the results are starting to turn. And you're, and you're starting to ride beautifully. It's interesting, Karis. I don't know if you've caught up with any of our previous editions, but we've got Shane Dye as part of our team. And Shane, one-on-one with the jockeys, where he analyzes how you've been riding, has been fascinating. He turned Joe Maria around. So, Karis, good luck. Shane, how have you assessed our special guest you today? put this on me all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> Karis, um, I thought he was riding poorly and he said why. But lately he's really improved and romantic warrior. He should have gone forward. We all know that. But outside of that, I think lately he's been riding well, very well. But he went through a, a stage there. I thought, Jesus, you're riding bad. That was over Christmas. And now we know why he had an injury. But, Terrace, I'm not knocking you the last month, say, because you're going good. Thanks, Shen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you like that RS he just said? Okay. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it's, it's straightforward. It's nice to know the straightforward answer. And uh, just it just makes you want to do better and, you know, improve yourself. So, and, you know, Shen, I've got a lot of respect for him. I used to watch him when he was riding in Mauritius. My dad lose a lot of money on him, so he's not my dad's favorite. <laughs> oh, that's a great backhander from Karis. That's absolutely magnificent. Well played, Karis. That's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Richo, sometimes there's a reason uh, why you do ride bad. Um, like um, Tedon was saying, Karis was t- saying, you know, he had an injury. We, I didn't know about it. Uh, probably should have, but that's why. And now he's corrected it and he's fit and he's, well, and I think you had a baby not that long ago, didn't you? No, no, no. We're expecting a baby in a few weeks' time. Oh, and coming up. Well, congrats. Yes, we've had the big oh, reveal. Yes. You're expecting a girl. We've seen the reveal on Instagram. So uh, that's it. Good luck. So I need and I, I need to add more winners to buy baby shoes. You know. Yeah. yeah. No, you certainly do. Can you win the Hong Kong Derby? How do you assess your chances with Romantic Warrior? I think I have a horse that is got a very good preparation. That's going into the race with a strong chance. So, um, you know, he, he, his classic mile was a fantastic win. We had the sweet run with, with a good draw. And, you know, the like classic cup, things did not work our way. Um, of course, racing four deep is not the ideal. And uh, But I, I, I did like the way the horse just kept on finding uh, energy into the straight. So, you know, I think the distance, you know, the derby distance will not be a problem. I think it's going to suit him. So we just need to get a better position than last time. And I think we're going to just see the best out of him this time. With a cushy run, um, Karis, and we're just watching a replay of the mile at the moment, you were very good through the line when you ran over the top of California Spangle there. I know you had an easier run and he was pressured a little bit in the lead, but it was quite a decisive win on that occasion. Yes. Uh, you know, I think I think that day he, showed, he just showed that how much he's improved and what a nice horse he is. Like you said, he did have a sweet run on the rail. He got held up a little bit in the straight. And uh, and I was a little bit worried because I thought, okay, it's going to be hard to catch that horse. But the way he showed a turn of foot and he literally ran past California Spangle that last 25 meter was impressive. Karis, where do you think you'll end up from gate eight? I, I would like to use his natural speed this time and uh, try to get him into a forward position. Uh, I think there's a few on my inside that's a bit slow. There's a one or two that will try to push a bit forward. So I would I would like to sit in a first fall. There is the uh, the BMW Hong Kong Derby field with the rating from uh, from Hutchie on the right hand side. And I've, you'll... I've got him marked a two dollar seventy favorite car. Obviously in Hong Kong the tote's not open yet. It doesn't open till Saturday. But I think you're a big chance, and I'll explain why as we go through this race. But um, obviously, his last run of defeat was fantastic. I think on the day, obviously, we'll see California Spangle be quite short in the market with Romantic Warrior, but late you'll see the support will come for Romantic Warrior, and I think you'll see a bit of a concerted effort and a push out of California Spangle, and they'll be betting around him a little bit. That's the way that I'm reading the race, and I'll explain why in a little while. Shane, who do you think should be favourite? A Romantic Warrior, without a doubt. He's favourite, for sure. Uh, I'm not fussed on California 
uh, a California Spangle this week over 2,000 metres. I thought he'd win last week, and he did. Um, so someone rang me and said, why is he $3 before the race? I said, he might start even money. I said, 1,800 at, at Charton is no different to a mile. Um, the A track normally favours horses coming down the middle of the track and racing off the fence. Now, whether it does this time, I don't know, because the last meeting there on the A track was wet, and when it was wet, it was favouring inside, but normally on the A track, they come off the fence. So that's not going to suit him either. But he just got a soft lead this day and kicked in the 1800, suited him. Zach rated him very well. The other horse was caught wide, which we saw. Um, there were a couple of good runs in the race, though, Clint. You know, they were, they were. But I just wanted to ask Karis. Karis, I can see you looking close as we're looking at this vision. I, I thought on the day you might want to press him and maybe sit outside California Spangle. Was there a reason why? that you didn't sort of press on and you decided to come back, obviously covered a lot of ground, but you were sort of weighing up your options at that point. Yeah, uh, w w the video you showed uh, where I was looking back, you know, when when I came out so well and I just felt that I had to work in more to cross the horses on my inside. And uh, in one stage where uh, I think Derek Lung's horse went on and got too deep, but I would still have to, to press on him to get across uh, all the other horses. I just felt that I was kind of working too hard to get him across, even if he jumped that well. Uh, I was not, if in the other way, if I was going to get there easy, I would have done it. But I just felt underneath me, I was going to have to work him harder to get him across. So I just decided to uh, stay where I was. In one stage of the race, I thought I was going to get three deep with, uh, with some cover. Uh, but there was a, a horse that dipped on my inside and, and, and that kicked me out. Well, a couple of things that might be important when we look back, and Shane's mentioned the track pattern. I've looked at the derby for the last four years on this day. The track plays fair. You can right. Normally the A course is spot on. You can be rail, uh, the rail might, not, might be inferior ground. But the last four derbies I've had, you across the day on the with the rail on the true position, it's been fine. But apart from that, that replay that we watched with California Spangle, that day there was a pattern and it was more up and in. So this upgrades the effort of Romantic Warrior. We had every race on the turf. Nothing came from more than two and a half lengths back at the 400-meter mark, and most of the runners through the day were close to the inside. So that just highlights what a great performance. I mean, it was an even better run. Now, four wide, no cover. How much is that? It's more than five lengths that he's covered extra ground. He's been in the worst part of the track. He's covered more ground, and he's closed off well. That final 200 meters that we saw from Romantic Warrior as well, Couple of runners in the race that Shane mentioned. Romantic, uh, sorry, California Spangles final two hundred. Now on the Jockey Club, we get their final four hundred splits. The final, the final two hundred. He was two and a half lengths slower than the likes of Senor Toba, who got home pretty well. Romantic Warrior ran a length, I think, a length and a half quicker. So he was making ground on him despite all of that. So there's a few factors there that I think will be a big factor in him turning the table. It is fascinating trying to dissect it all, Karis. Uh, this race is so special to everyone in, in Hong Kong. Uh, have you started to dream the dream? What would it be like to win this great race? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, of course, for all the Hong Kong people here, even from trainer, jockeys, owners, this is one race that, you know, we would uh, love to win when you ride in Hong Kong. There's many big races in Hong Kong, but this one has got something about it. It's got some prestige about it's race that, that all the jockeys want to win. And um, I'm just I'm just looking forward now because I know I have a host that have a chance, uh, a very good chance in the race, and I'm just uh, gonna go to the race confidence and just try to give the host the best ride. Just I quickly, can. Uh, Karish, you mentioned you might go for him. Is that also? Do you think there's? It looks on paper the way I've read the race with my map. I thought there'd be pretty good speed here as well, and um, obviously got a bit of gate speed, your guy. But uh, do you think the race will be run? How do you think the pace will be of the race? Because it there's a few in obviously California Spangle we know is going forward, but does he get much pressure in that role? You know, there was a host, uh, Rocket Spade. Uh, I see Casper put the blinkers on and they trialed him. They went forward on that host and he looks like uh, he's one of them that could uh, give California Spangle a bit of worry. And uh, I think the other host, Champion Dragon, the drone two from Tony Cruz, even he mentioned he, that host would be a bit forward. Um, I, I, I won on the host the time before I, I, I laid the race throughout. So, you know, they, on the inside, there is a few horses will go, but I'm not saying that I would take on the speed 
on the inside of me, I would I would like them to go on and then slide behind them uh, from that good natural speed I have. I could have the advantage uh, from the slow one. So I'm, I would try not to use too much petrol. It's very important to save some petrol the first turn uh, and try getting to switch off as quick as I can. Now, for one minute, there's no way Champion Dragon is going to take California Spangle on. They're trained by the same trainer. That will not be happening. So for no, no, I'm not saying, yeah. Pace, forget him as the pace. Yeah. If, if I'm on your horse, I'm watching every race up until race eight to see how that track is and where they're winning from. You may be good as gold being three wide, fifth or sixth. It may not matter if you've got cover if they're winning out deep. Watch the races, where they're winning from, and then make your decision after race seven. This is what I'm going to do. Don't worry about it now. Of course, yeah. No problem. Thank you for that. <laughs> a, hey, Karis, that's good advice. Also, Hutch, have you – Karis does watch it. I mean, there's some pattern, patterns that we see yeah. in Hong Kong, and I'll say one thing. There's a few that, that know where to be on the tracks on certain days, and Karis – Peyton is definitely one of them. He certainly is. Um, from a pedigree point of view, have you touched in with your mates yes. with the G1 well, gold look, mine a, to find it, it who's is, best suited at this look, trip? This is a really important tool for many reasons, group1goldmine.com, and, and we analyse just from a pedigree point of view because it's a big factor with California Spangle, obviously. Now, some of the stats there that we'll, we'll show on this graphic suggest that Hasn't had a winner up to 2,000 metres, of course, the exceeding excel is this black type. It's a, it's a little bit of a query going to that distance, whereas according to the pedigree and the analysis in terms of what they put together, Romantic Warrior um, is clearly going to be well suited to the 2,000. That's what we can derive from the, obviously both the sire and dam lines and statistics-based information. So a query, California Spangle would be breaking new ground with a his pedigree over that trip, Romantic Warrior, very much in the game. Who is going to win, RS Die? Who are you going to be uh, punting on in the Hong Kong Derby? Oh, uh, uh, it depends on pricing, of course, but I've got Romantic Warrior on top. Uh, his runs have all been good. He, he's improved every run, even though he got beat last start. Turin Red Star went very well last start. And, of course, uh, Casper saw senior Topa, but I think he really wants 2,400 metres. He's very well one-paced. He needs a fast run race where he can sit midfield, and he won't quicken, but he'll keep coming to the line, and he could actually keep going to win the race if they go fast enough, but uh, he needs the pace on for him to win. Uh, he's my each-way play, seen October. He's been a horse that's been targeted at this race. I take your point in regards to 2,400 metres is probably his best trip. Shane, will there be enough pace for a horse like him on the each way to be able to get back and then come over the top? So the big question, pace in the race. I don't think there is pace in the race. I think Zach will dictate unless someone does something with uh, Rocket Spade, Casper with the blinkers on, he goes, might be something else. But on paper, there isn't a pace. See, the pace is controlled by Tony uh, Cruz. He's got three in there. I'm a single man can go forward if they want to and lead. Uh, Champion Dragon can go forward and lead. And, of course, the, the second favourite, uh, California Spangle, can. There's no way in the world he's going to let the other two take him on. So you can forget that. So then you've got to go outside the box to look at the pace. And they're just, I don't think there is the pace there to be taken on. Yeah, I, I, I sort of disagree with Shane. I think there will be a more genuine tempo here. I think that, um, first of all, I'm a single man. He's a stable man. He won't want to, but he can get very keen. The rocket spade. He led up in a 1,200-metre trial the other day with the blinkers on and went very quick. So if he jumps and takes hold, and he's a horse that Shane pointed out once before, if you set him alight early, yeah. he's extremely hard to hold. If that happens, he could inject some speed. So that's a potential. But either way, Senor Toba won't be that far back from that barrier. It's a two-turn track, and he's, he is a good value bet. I think um, you'll see some late support for him. I think clearly Romantic Warrior is the one to beat, and I think Senor Toba is the one that will uh, really step up. Zenia Topa will definitely be in the market. Yeah. Because yeah. there's not many horses you can back in the Starby. Yeah, I think he'll be around about fourth. Five. You think Romantic Warrior probably starts favourite head of California Spangle. Uh, Turin Red Sun will be in the market be. with, with yeah. uh, Sino yeah. Toba. They'll be probably the top four. They'll be the top four, and I think in that order. And maybe the Irishman sort of be another one. Hey, Karis, just quickly, what, what's your, have you got any other ride in particular you're keen on on the day? Uh, yeah, of course I have a, a few rides. Uh, I think the horse I'm riding in race one uh, will will go will go well. He he ran very good last time. Uh, he he was way out of out, out of the ground and he flew home. 
So he could he could be one of the hosts that one of my chances. And that's race one number two called Alligator. Yeah, Alligator. Yeah. Alligator. Yeah. And California Sky is not too bad. He's improving nicely at all. So nothing special, but uh, of course, uh, you know, anything can happen in Hong Kong. So give every horse a chance to win the race. And how long till you become a father, Karis? How long? Away, away. Uh, so my wife is now on 35 weeks. So it could be any time, you know, two weeks, uh, three weeks. So my wife is like, I just want the baby out as soon as I can now. So <laughs> I can, she's very, she can't wait anymore. Well, as a father of three daughters, all I can simply say is good luck. <laughs> I told my wife already, you know, I need to focus on the season. So I need to spare, sleep in a spare bedroom to focus on racing. She can take care of the baby at night. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one as well, Karis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... One yeah. thing, Karis, changing the subject, yes. I know we want to talk about babies on here, but what about Lucky with you in the last race? He's a very nice horse. He didn't run the mile. He comes back to 1,200. Do you think he can win from gate 12? Because I think he's got a really good chance. Yeah, I, I think, you know, he's, he's a lovely horse. Of course, I, I did think last time going the mile was a bit too far for him. Uh, he come back down in his, in his uh, right distance. He's a horse that's improving. I've been on him a few times uh, in the morning. He was up in Chungfa. Uh, he's, he's feeling good. I think even from the outside gate would not be a problem. He could get across nicely, uh, not to lead. But there's other host of uh, of Mr. Hayes that I think got a bit of speed. So you know, if I if I'm in the first first uh, bit of the front leaders, I I think I have a chance also. Yeah, he's only got 118 on his back too. Yeah, he, oh, most of his win when I won on him, he really impressed me. Yeah, uh, so he's a lovely horse. Yeah, race ten, number eleven, Karis. Thanks so much for your time and good luck uh, for a crack at the great race, the Derby. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, wonderful to catch up with uh, Karis Teton. He's All so right. polite, isn't he, Richo? Be- beg your pardon? Uh, He's so Aris? polite, not like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Don't ever change, mate. We love you the way you are. And Sunday, of course, strap yourself in. Sunday is for Hong Kong Day. HutchieHonkers.com is the website to get on for a full analysis for all 10 races on the program on Sunday. But Hutchie, I've grabbed your arm and thrown it up your back and said, let's find one today. And we're going to concentrate on race number seven in your ratings. Yeah, nice horse. Um, and we'll just have a quick look at the price. I've marked him odds on. He was odds on last start, and it's the horse is called Voyage Bubble. I've got him marked a dollar ninety-four. It's a much stronger race than what he struck last time at. He was a dollar seventy favorite there in a lower grade. But I think he can go up in class and win. And obviously, you can see with the, what I've got priced there, pin sprints. He comes, Ted, and an interesting one a uh, little further down um, in, uh, trust me, could be in the market as well. But, look, he's a nice horse going forward, this guy, Voyage Bubble. And I thought he'd be pretty tough to beat. Um, he, he he ran well on debut behind a horse called Miracle Victory. That's proved to be a good form race. He then went on this day. Now, this was a rain-affected track, and... He had a lot of favours with the way the race was run. So that's got to temper this to an extent. Um, Zach got in a controlling position outside the lead. He pushed the button. He beat this field quite handsomely. And the form, in fairness, hasn't worked out that well. But he obviously got through the ground and showed that nice progress first to second start. But he drops five kilos on this run. He goes up in grade. I think Zach will be positive once again. I see him starting really short in the market voyage bubble. I think he's a nice horse going forward. And... The other factor is, I mean, I think it'd be better over probably a touch further, but just with that weight drop up in grade, it's a formula that um, often I refer to and everyone in Hong Kong is well aware of. But they go up in class with that, that big drop in weight for a young progressive horse like this is a big factor and I think it'd be extremely hard to beat. So black figures would be ideal and then we would bet accordingly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, hopefully it comes up, you know, somewhere in that when the tote prices uh, come out on the weekend and uh, close to jump. I don't think, I don't know if he will, but if there is, if that is the case, then, you know, there'll be some value potentially in the Cornella. I think Pins Prince and, and here comes Ted look, uh, look the logical options as far as that's concerned. But Voyage Bubble, he, he looks like quite a nice horse. Shane, agree? I totally agree. Um, he's not going to be in the black, I don't think. Um, we hope he will be. 
Um, the only thing is, as Clint said, he did win on a wet track. But the, uh, the, the flip side to that is this is not a strong class three. Normally you get a few nice horses in class threes. This is a pretty weak class three. So he'll dominate the betting and, um, as Clint said, should win. Okay, so that's in race seven, maybe as a running double into, let's reiterate, your derby selection in Romantic Warrior. Yeah, I like Romantic Warrior. And um, like I said, I think I, I wasn't re- – I thought with Daniel Tober, completely agree with what Shane said with regard to mile and a half. We know him from here. We yeah, know yeah. he's a mile and a half horse. But I just feel Cass just put the blankers on him. He's trialled quite well with them. His last run, like I said, it, it, it was it was a good finish to that race in terms of his sectional splits, particularly that last 200, given the pattern – Etc. that I've already referenced on the day. And from that, Barrett, it's a 210, 2000 meter race. He's drawn low. I think if Joe can get this guy out and have him camp midfield on the rail, what, what I see a, a reasonable speed, look out. I think Senor Toba run a big yeah, race. Yeah, he'll do me. I'll play him each way all day there. Shane, just to reiterate, you haven't finalized your selections. Uh, but- I'll go for Romantic Warrior from Turin Red Star and Senor Topa. With the query in the race, and I think this is going to go very well with the change of jockey and Blake Sheen on the Irishman. All of his runs have been good. He's got gate 13. He'll go back. And Blake is riding very patiently, and he's saving ground at present. He's gone up a notch. And if they do go too fast in the race, which I don't think they will, but if they do, he's the one that could hit the line. Best bet on Sunday for you, Jane? Uh, I'll go a bit rough. It's not a best bet, but just having a look at the early races, there's one there that got beat by 35 lengths last start in race three called Joyful Heart. Now, he should be odds. It's not a strong class four. He got beat on a wet track. He's since trialed. He trialed the other day over 1,200 metres, and his action was really – he ran second. He went well, but his action looked really good. So I wouldn't be surprised if he went better. I'm not saying he's going to win or anything. He did run second two starts ago, but he'll 100% go better than he did on the wet track last start. Joyful Heart, race three, number four, last start, 14th, beaten how many lengths? 35 lengths. 35 lengths. He'll go better for sure. Hutchieshonkers.com. There you go. Do you, like have you, have you got to race in. three in your analysis? Well, no, I have it, but I know one thing. There's a horse in the race that will probably start short in star contact, and I've been against him. Oh, he comes out of low-rating races for me. Blake Shin, David and, Yeah, and they might have him short again in the market. They haven't gone right through the race, but he'd be one that I'd be looking to take on and, and, and see what else is in the race. Okay. Have it's you got actually not a strong class four, Richo. It's a pretty weak class four. There's yeah, nothing that stands out. Helene Mascot handicapped the name of that race, race number three. Have you got a best bet for us? The, or are you just going to concentrate on race seven? The best bet would be the voyage bubble at this at this point in time, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to go through the rest of the field, go to the website for the, the full set. And I would have thought we'd be trading pretty hard on Sunday, would we not? Yeah, the other one that I like on the day and, and maybe um, at sort of first glance without having going right through it is, was running glory. Really had the pattern against him last start. His late splits were good. He goes up to a mile. He's actually in, I think, race six. And uh, it's John Size, Joe Marrera. He doesn't have a lot of early speed, Shane, but he's another nice horse on the upgrade. He had plenty against him the other day, but he's one that I think will bounce back. And he was a short price favorite the other day. We, we were happy to sort of bet around him, given that where he was going to be. But I, I think uh, he'll bounce back into calculations. Race six, number seven. Race six, I, number I agree seven. with that, Richo. Um, he stands out. He'll be favorite for sure. Track should suit him too if they're coming down the middle because he's got gate 12. Uh, the other horse in that race, which is racing well, is Ch- uh, Chariot Grace. He goes to 1,600 for the first time, but he's looking for it. He's definitely looking for it. Teton's on him. Jesus, a couple of good rides Teton's got. He didn't even mention them. Yeah. Uh, that was one of them, Chariot Grace, but I totally agree. And there should be pace in the race because the horse called Super Winner, who leads in 1,400s, is in it. So they should go along, and that will suit Clint's tip and glory. You've got a tea time, RS die. Are you going to flush it down the middle on the first? <laughs> no, because I won't be able to have a little warm-up first. I'll be waiting for me. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't look for excuses. As always, mate, uh, absolute pleasure. Uh, welcome to Series 2. We're going to have a lot of fun. Thanks, mate. Good luck to everyone. Yeah, from RS die to Hutchie, Hutchie'sHonkers.com. Jump on the website and let's find a stack of winners on Sunday. Yeah, Hutch. we're going to have a good day uh, one way or the other. But uh, I think this is the year that Karis Teton wins the big one. I think he's got a great chance. Enjoy Derby Day, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and listening.